Welcome back. And I'm glad to be back. <laughs> damn glad to be back. It's been a hot minute. It is. It's been damn hot. <laughs> it, 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 amen. Um, it's been a whirlwind tour. Uh, we've uh, we both had some some work shit going on that's had us distracted, but we're back in the our respective studios filming for you once again. Back to drinking. Back to drinking on camera. Not that, not that, that ever. <laughs> not, that, yeah. not that that ever stopped. But, yeah, yeah. Um, back back to drinking on camera. I'm filming. <laughs> Um, so what have we done recently? Recently we had, uh, I took a trip. We I talked to a guy. Question. Um, that was, a uh, Christian Huber up at Starlight Distillery. That, that was, was fun Huber. as hell. Um, you're going to see some more of their stuff on this show, uh, because I got some souvenirs because that's what you do. Yeah. Um, we did a controversial little weeder uh, showdown between uh, Old Weller Antique and some Makers Mark 101 to see which weeder reigns supreme. That was a pretty fun episode. Uh, that's a really good expression of, uh, well, we're not going to spoil it. You uh, watch it for yourself. Uh, form your own opinions. So tonight, today, whenever you're watching this, this is not a bottom shelf story. Um, we're drinking, I think, probably the oldest thing Dickel has out right now, right? Uh, yes, actually. Um, I, that, I don't think I, I don't think I've ever seen anything Dickel oh, released that's higher than that. I on the Wikipedia, um, the intertubes. It mentioned, I guess, at some point they had like a seventeen-year-old, uh, like distiller select. Um, I don't know anything about that. I know last year, 2020, shit, what was last year? 2020, their bottled and bond was a 15 year expression. Yes. Um, it was actually really good. But what are we talking about? George Dickel, single barrel, 15 year old Castrate. Tennessee whiskey, cask straight. Um, what is yours? 50.6. Mine's 52.3. Oh, hot damn. Um, now, if you've been around whiskey, uh, particularly bourbon, for a long time, most bourbon is not 15 years old. Um, you're right. going to pay a premium to get 15-year-old bourbon. Um, I'm trying to think what's even, like, what are some 15-year age-stated bourbons? Um, that, are, that are normally around? Knob Creek, know, Knob, Knob Creek 15. Knob, Knob Creek 15, uh, which was a limited release, but it's but, around. But they've done their, they've done some 15 year single barrels. Yeah, you, yeah, you got a, plenty of 15 year picks out there. Um, I would, I would say the there's really not hardly anything that's like that's over 10 that that's a mainstay. That that's that's age stated at that. Right. I, mean, I think 12, 12 is about the cutoff. Yeah. Um, I know R Turkey's done a couple of older, like Masters Keeps. Right, they did. A, um, they, they've done two seventeen years. Well, th those are the only two that were actually age stated. There were a couple that were like press released age stated, but not on the bottle. They got that thirteen year old Russells now. Yes, um, but so so fifteen years is a, is a rarity. Now yeah. let's talk about price point. Oh, before we sorry. Dive into this. Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. That's your. There's your twelve year old. Elliot Craig Barrel Proof. Yeah. yeah. Um, Nom Creek's got a twelve. Yep. Um, Weller's got a twelve. If you can find it. So what what we're coming back to is fifteen year old Dickel. This is legally bourbon, but it's actually more legally Tennessee whiskey. It's like a um, state, states rights versus federal rights type of thing. Yeah. This bad boy will set you back sixty five bucks. Um, the next closest competitor that you're going to be able to find on the shelf is about 30 bucks more. And that's the Knob Creek 15. Um, so already right out of the gate, if you want some old ass bourbon, bourbon, Tennessee whiskey, this is the way to go. They, they get, uh, they, they get mad at that. You better, you better slow your roll there. <laughs> old ass Tennessee whiskey with no E. Um, 
this this is your this is your money right here. Um, sixty five bucks. I've seen it. Our total wines down here have it. If you're in a kind of a bigger metropolitan area, you probably have a total wine. Um, probably your bigger box stores will definitely have it. This is a single barrel, so individual mileage may vary slightly. Um, but these these kind of mass produced single barrels, I think, are all pretty. They're, like, yeah, they're, they're yeah, they're fairly uh, fairly similar in what they were trying to do. Um. Now, elephant in the room, George Dickel uh, gets a moniker um, known as Flintstone Vitamin. Uh, George Dickel's whiskey, uh, they have some just kind of little bottom, bottom shelf offerings. Uh, George Dickel has a very unique taste, and for all intents and purposes, People say it tastes like Flintstone vitamins, and the reason they say that is because it has most. It's because it does. Well, well, <laughs> it has a very distinct minerality to it. Yeah, it's it's got a, yeah. And from what I have gathered, as far as intel on why that is, is mostly because of their yeast strain that they use. Um, most of these big distilleries have their own kind of proprietary blend or, or, you know, safeguarded or they have this whole thing. Bickle uses a brewer's yeast, um, for this. So something you would use in a bit, you know, making a beer, Eric, you would know a little bit more about that than me, but it's yeast. it is yeast. It's like, it's like they were, you know, at old soul, Mike and them were making a, uh, making that hard water. Yeah. 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 But they were using a champagne yeast. Gotcha. To do it, um, just to you know, give it a little, little different flavor. But anyway, so so what I've read is that yeast strain reacts with the limestone water that they use, and kind of instead of um, instead of the barrel kind of softening the 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 minerality of that water, kind of heightens it. Now I have noticed. I think in some of the higher proof Dickel offerings, you don't get as much of that vitamin E flavor. No, no, um, yeah, no, you're right. The higher proof, the higher proof in the age definitely uh, tames it. I, I say that, but of course, it's been a hot minute since I've had this, so I may prove I, myself wrong. I, I still get, I, I still get the minerality on. I don't mind that note. It is. Like, it doesn't a, bother me. It's different. It's a change of pace. Yeah, it's it's definitely a. It's it's not part of your typical flavor profile. Like I know I know when I'm drinking Wild Turkey, Heaven Hill, or Jim Beam, and it's just like most of those are fairly damn similar. And you know, Dickel is a good change of pace. Yep. Anyways, so, I'm gonna start smelling this or. Uh, Let's cue it. Nose fuck this bitch. <sighs> it's like some. It, it, it's like somebody took. Uh, it's, it's like somebody shoved a spout in a maple tree in Canada and just like ran uh, limestone water down it. <laughs> it's yeah. It's sweet. It's got a nuttiness. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's useless. <laughs> yeah. Shockiller. Shockiller. Um, Yo, chicken. <laughs> yeah, it does have a little kind of a peanutty note to it. Not even like just generic nut. Like it's that. Uh, and, and I know it's that, that minerally twang. That's my stage name, generic nut. <laughs> and, and minerally twang. Minerally twang. Um. It's We're definitely got some tenacious D. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, like when you think about it, that it's yeast. Like that's what you smell is that yeasty. Like, again, if, if you've ever done any home brewing and have been like, you know, face down in a in a fermenter that you just pitched yeast in, it's it's that kind of earthy aroma that you get. And another thing too, with that kind of that earthy smell, I get on. Um, bourbons that have been put into the uh like kind of the lower floors 
or that that mustiness. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, it's a must. That that basement smell that I always get. That's that's E H Taylor all day long for me. Um, Megan Megan was let uh, like letting a Danish rye. You have to let a Danish certain that she buys rye for like most of the entire day, and it's it's the exact same smell. It just smells like back of a brewery. <laughs> Mm. All right. It has a good thick maple syrup. Like it just, it just smells sugary. It, it is. It's a big sweet aroma. Um, that kind of refined uh, brown sugary mapley. Um, you've got that earthiness from the yeast and water, and you've got a nice oaky kind of just afterbirth. <laughs> You know, I made I made fun of that description of that rum, but it's an oaky tang. It's like a like a zing. Yeah. All right. T let's tasting. Drink let's drink it. Yeah, it's like a, I don't know, I, I, I remember when I first tried this, I didn't get any minerals at all, and now it is, this is a mineral, this. It's, it's really opened up, um, to a very unique, it's like the minerals and the yeast and like the oak on the finish have conspired together for kind of almost a tart finish. Like you get a little bit of like a sour note off of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like sour, like sour yeast, like sour bread, sourdough. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not unpleasant. Um, no, I mean, it, it's not, it's, it's, it's hard because most bourbon tastes so mm -hmm. like most American whiskey unless you're dealing in rye, taste so similar um, that when you get something like this that has components of that typical flavor profile, but then it's got like a slight deviation, you're like, huh, you're kind of like taken off guard. This is almost like a, like a hit, like a heavily malted cast strength scotch. Mixed with a mixed with a bourbon. <laughs> I don't know that I would go that far. I I agree with the malt. I think you've got like it's a. Here it is. It's, I'm getting I'm, like, get, I'm getting the malt like I'm getting that kind of malty bread kind of taste. It's like a damn malted milk ball, there like you a go. whopper. Yeah. It's that. It's that kind of like a mal or a malted milkshake. It, it's that like. Ah, it's twang. a twang. It's a twang. Yeah. Good lord. It, watch us fumble through trying to describe this. <laughs> That's good. I mean, I, I get. I, I mean, it, it's fifteen years old. I, I don't, and I don't think old whiskey is made to drink every day. Or no, be that no. Old. I was ha I was having this conversation with somebody with somebody yesterday about um, older whiskey, and there was just like, because because he asked me, he asked me is. Is older whiskey or is is like like Pappy? Like he said, is Pappy Twenty better than Wild Turkey? And I, I said to me, no. And I told him, I said, and because because I had a cigar guy that was with me, and I said it's the same thing in cigars. I said it most, and I'm, I'm not talking about cigar snobs because they're the same type of people that are in the whiskey groups. Cigar people if they're legit cigar smokers, won't buy a cigar over six bucks unless it's a special occasion because they are. there are plenty that are taste just fine and they get the same bang for their buck out of the six bucks that they would out of a $20 one because the $20 one is a special occasion one and it's not made to smoke every day. It's like I mean, these. Let's... It's like this is not made to drink every day. This is made to appreciate like what it is. This is a good, 
like we just had a, a thunderstorm roll through up here. So we're cruising about 75, upper 70s, nice and humid. The bugs are starting to come back out. You got a little bit of a breeze. Be, it'd be good. Sit out on the porch, pour you a glass of this. Yeah. Just kind of just kind of rock back and forth. Um, a small, small sipping whiskey. It's a small, a small sip of whiskey. Can we get a um, can we get a picture of like a, a caricature of Duval on a t shirt and and say small sip and whiskey? It's just a small sip of whiskey. Oh, small mm -hmm. sip of whiskey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I haven't I mean, seen you in forever. I missed you. I mean, like, let's be real. Like in in the world of Scotch, uh, a 12, 13, 14, 15 year old Scotch is an everyday scotch right um and that's that's just the aging process um in bourbon in whiskey i'd almost say probably nine years would be the cutoff now it would even even i even find my nine-year-old knob creek maybe a little much for everyday drinking i think i think you're I think like the big boys have caught up to to six to nine blends. Like I think yeah. that's I think that's the range for the bottom stuff right now. Yeah. Um I mean based on what we know about most everybody is we're we're cruising at about that that age point. Yeah. So that brings us Back. to this point of this was sixty five bucks. This is a George Dickel single barrel cast strength Tennessee whiskey. That was 15 years old. Did we give this some crazy critiques? Yes, we did. Do we think this is a damn fair buy at what you're getting? Buy again all day. I, I'd pay... Mm, I'd pay 80 for this. 80, yeah. Because, um, again, like I said, my Knob Creek 12 was 65. And... You're talking three years of age and a higher proof. So, if if that if that's something that's important to you, um, you know, Eric Eric and I have got to where we appreciate um, a higher proof. We're almost done. We're almost done. If, if it's if it's if it's even less than a hundred, we generally kind of shit on it a little bit. Right. Um. But no. So this is. Fantastic buy. I may go back and buy another one just to have. I'll, I'll probably be, I need to buy a backup just to have as well. Um, I've, I don't want to take it for granted. <laughs> like a, like a right. dollar. <laughs> but, but anyway, so this, um, is, this is a, this is a fun one. This is a weird one. This is yeah. not, this is not a normal kind of flavor profile. It's very unique. It's, it's very good. Yeah, it's a very it's very interesting. I think it's a good change of pace. It's very affordable. Um, not many other places you're gonna find 15 year straight whiskey at cash strain and a single barrel for 60 some bucks. I this is like I said, this is a buy all day. Um, it's unique. It's different. Um, like I said, I'll go buy another one. Yep. Well. That's all we got. Um, like, share, subscribe, follow. We appreciate you keeping up with us. Um, we've been trying to do some posts, and even though we've been busier than a one-legged man in ass-kicking contest. But we will be uh, better at it. Yes. We're, we're going to try, at least. Um, definitely check us out. Check out our podcast, um, Eric String Whiskey Non-Chill Filter. That's EDWNCF on Shout Engine and Apple Podcasts. That's where all the behind-the-scenes audio ends up from our recent episodes. Um, get to see the the madness behind the method. Uh, but again, this is a fun kind of return to the studio after a, a, a little bit of a hiatus. Uh, a good whiskey to return with, I think. Yep, definitely. Uh, and, and until next time. Cheers. Cheers.